Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Printalyzer Densitometer. Some of you may have been following Derek Koenigsberg's efforts to make a new entry-level but very functional densitometer. He has sent me a sample. This is a pre-production model, uh, but I do believe it is going to be pretty much exactly the way that they come out when they are available later this summer. And we're going to compare it to my x 810. It is a transmission and reflection densitometer. It works only with black and white materials. It's fine, most people are going to be doing sensitometry with black and white. And I've got a few different targets, both transmission and reflection, that we're going to be using to do that comparison. So as you can see, it's a very small device. It will work up to about five by seven material, eight by 10, not as easily towards the center of the image, but if you're really serious about it and you really have large film, you may already have invested or be thinking about investing in something like this. This device is easy to use. It has just four buttons. We have the read button up and down, which are used for both menu functions and for calibration. And then we have the menu button itself. The manual is very easy to follow. Uh, I used it to calibrate this device. I also used it to update the firmware, which was super simple. It just connected to my computer with the USB cable and it showed up as a USB drive, dropped the new file in, done. The USB cable is a USB-C, so you can use it with modern computers or with the right USB-C to A cable. You can use it with slightly older machines. If you want to plug this directly in and have your readings go directly into a spreadsheet. Now, if you've been watching this channel long enough and you've seen my sensitometry videos, you know that I like to just write everything down on paper and graph uh, in, in that manner. I'm, I'm not really a spreadsheet user but you know, to each their own. So we're gonna go ahead, look at both of these with the transmission and reflection and just see how they compare. Now I will say, this is the second time that I've uh, gotten ready to make this video. The first time they did not match. I'm gonna be upfront about that. However, what I realized after doing it and trying to think through the discrepancies, this device came calibrated to the calibration targets provided by Derek. This device is calibrated to the calibration target that I purchased from x -Rite. Different calibrations, different readings. So, simple matter to recalibrate this. Like I said, the manual was very easy to follow. Once I recalibrated to the same target as this, well, now we're going to see how that turns out. So let's grab some material and let's look at it. Let's start with some reflection material. We're going to begin with my x rite reflection calibration card. It has specific densities for each patch and we're gonna read them on the x rite first. Let's start with the white patch. and get 0 0.07, and that is exactly what my target sheet says I should get. The gray patch, 0 0.96, exactly as it should be, and the black should be 1.82, 1.83, so very, very close. Now we're going to do the printalyzer, we get 0 0.06, so off by 0 0.01. This should be 0 0.96, 0 0.94, very close. And the black patch, 1.78 instead of 1.82. Now I will state before we get too involved, yes, these read a little bit different, but as I said a moment ago, I calibrated both of these to the same target, but that was the transmission. I did not recalibrate the reflection target. 
So this is calibrated to the printalyzer reflection target, which is made of photographic paper. And this target here is made from a ceramic coated metal. So it, it does not really change much. Uh, but they're still reading very, very, very close. So both targets are coming out pretty close on the reflection. The transmission is where I was having the biggest discrepancy before recalibrating this. Now we're gonna see if there's still that discrepancy with that change. So let's go ahead and read some transmission materials because that's most likely what you're gonna be using a densitometer for. Though you could be using it for paper and that's perfectly okay, especially if you're doing things with non-silver process like platinum. Um, things like that, but for those of you that are trying to find the max, uh, D max for your prints, this will work really, really well. Okay, let's grab the X right transmission target, and we're going to read both of these, and then we're going to read my Kodak number three step tablet. So, starting with the X right, I should be getting Put that on transmission. Should get a 0 0.25. Oops. Yeah, we won. You're going to see a couple of different things happen here. The X right reads with film emulsion down, and the printalyzer reads emulsion up. Keep that in mind. You do have to orient your film in the correct direction to get the best reading. So emulsion down here. 0 0.24, this one should be 1.48, we get 1.47, 2.96, we get 2.96, and here should be 3.73, and we get 3.73. So now let's try the same thing with the printalyzer should be 0 0.25, let's put this in transmission mode, 0 0.25, fantastic, uh, 1.48, which is exactly what it should read, 2.96, yep, what it should be, 3.73, and it reads 3.72. So, very good readings from both. So very good readings from both, only off by a hundredth of a log unit on some patches and not even all patches. Let's go ahead and open up this. While this is an uncalibrated step tablet from Kodak, I have calibrations for it that were actually made on a Tobias brand densitometer a while back. And we're going to see how close we are. So again, emulsion down, emulsion up. And we're gonna read maybe four different patches. So let's read the first patch, 0 0.19. That matches what I had before. Let's read patch number Patch number eight, 1.26, that matches. Patch number 14, 1. I get 2.19, and I originally got 2.21. And now let's read the DMAX. 3.14, and I originally got 3.15 with the Tobias. Let's try the same patches with the printalyzer. Let's see if I can get in here. All right, 0 0.2. The original was 0 0.19, so only 100. 1.85. And it was 1.26 originally. We get 2.21. And I got 2.21. Let's check DMAX. 3.17. And 
and I originally got 3.15, the x write reads 3.14, so just a touch high on Dmax, but still very, very close. We could read more stuff, but I think this pretty much shows that if you get the printalyzer densitometer, you're going to be pretty happy with the readings. As long as it's calibrated to the target and you use it consistently, then your readings will be consistent and you'll have good curves. It's a very lightweight machine. It doesn't take up a lot of desk space. It connects easily to a computer or to a charger. Right now it's in a um, charger. It's plugged into a USB charger for one of my cameras, but you could easily use any sort of USB charger. So if you're in the market for one of these devices, I think you'll be happy with this. I don't currently have a price point available. I do believe it's going to be somewhere in the range of 300, maybe less. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I don't think Derek is to that point yet. Uh, he's got to make some first before uh, he starts getting uh, fully into uh, to pricing and marketing. However, I think you would be very satisfied with this. No need to find yourself an old x write machine like this one and then have to find the targets to calibrate it with, which are very hard now. Parts are getting almost impossible. x write no longer supports it. No, this does not do color, but how often are we really measuring color stuff? I usually don't, even though I am shooting more and more color. That's just more of a personal choice on my part. But if you're doing black and white and you want to get those curves done, you'll be very happy with this. Thank you for watching. Watch for this. Watch his announcements on his YouTube channel uh, or on Fotrio, maybe even large format. He's making those announcements as progress on manufacturing and testing is being made. I know a couple other people have gotten these to try out. So get out there, make some photographs, make some curves, and we'll see you next time.